here are my slides. And um, just so you guys know, I talked to Alexei about this earlier, but I am on a cellular plan here in Croatia. And it's unlimited data, but they've got this funky thing that every th two gigs, you've got to send a text message to turn on your data again. So if I drop for a second, I'm going to send a text message and I'll be back on a second later. Um, it's unlimited data, sort of. <laughs> All right, can you see my screen, Martin? All right, everyone can see my screen. All right, so again, thank you so much for having me back. I spoke, um, I believe, in December when I was in Zurich. Um, I got to spend the holidays in Zurich, and I'm in Croatia right now. Um, and I'm glad to be able to talk to you guys about images. So this is really exciting. Um, so hi, I'm Doug. Um, I do a lot of stuff on helping people make media faster, whether it's in native apps in um, on the web, whether it's mobile, I lead workshops on it. I wrote a book on how to speed up Android apps. If you want to download it, that's the URL, go for it. And I'm the only Doug Sillers on the internet, so feel free to reach out if you have any questions. <clears throat> so this is in Grindelwald in Switzerland. And um, how many of you get a little nervous thinking about walking across this cliff? Right, it's literally nailed to the side of an Alp. Right, um, about four years ago, Ericsson did this study, and they put sensors on people's heads to figure out how people felt about different stimuli. And they found that people, their anxiety went up when they queued up for a line. They found that people's anxiety, when they thought about standing on the edge of the cliff, they found their anxiety level went up. Actually, they found that people got more stressed out from seeing slow mobile websites than actually thinking about standing on the edge of a cliff. So that feeling you had when you were thinking about standing on the edge of a cliff is what you, our users feel like when we have slow mobile websites. And when you think about what builds up a website, this is from about a year ago, but it hasn't changed, right? You know, we've got a lot of JavaScript, we've got a lot of CSS, but most websites are like half or more than half in terms of tonnage, they're images. So if you want to make your web page smaller, an easy place to look is what can we do to make our images smaller? Because if half of the stuff being downloaded is images, if we can make them smaller, it's going to make web page download faster. So hopefully a lot of you here have heard of Lighthouse. If you haven't heard of Lighthouse, it's a free tool um, that tests your website for a lot of things, for accessibility and for performance. And it has four image optimizations built into it looking at image quality, image format, image sizing, and lazy loading. And what I've done is um, if, you're, if you're looking at performance, web page test is this awesome tool. It's free, it's open source. You type in your URL, it'll test it on like devices all around the world if you want, and it'll tell you how fast your web page is. It's, it's incredible. So if you're in Switzerland and you wanna see how your web page loads in Shanghai, you can use it with web page test is pretty, pretty neat. Um, you can use Lighthouse inside web page test. So you get all the scores when you run your web page test score. And then built on top of web page test is this other free tool called the HTTP archive. And what that does is every month it tests 5 million web pages with web page test and with Lighthouse. So you have this giant database up in Google BigQuery that you can query and learn about how the web is being built today. And we can look at these four image optimizations across 5 million web pages and see sort of where the web is today. So we'll start with image quality. So Lighthouse recommends that you save all your images at 85% quality. So if you ever like opened up Photoshop or really any image processing tool, when you hit save, there's always like this slider for your JPEG images, like where do you want to save it? And Google found that like 85% is generally good enough. If you save it at 85%, you're going to make the images generally what I found about half the size in kilobytes, but the quality is still awesome and nobody can tell the difference. There are a lot of tools that will do that. Image Magic can do that. It's a command line tool. You can save it at quality 85 and you get the output, the output image. Tools like Cloudinary on the web, you just add a quality 85 to the URL, it generates the 85% um, quality image. And so this is a picture I took when I was in, in Latvia. And on my phone, it's 3.6 megabytes. I save it at 85% and it's half the size. And you know, there's no difference. 
to the human eye. We can't tell the difference. There are pixels missing, but like nobody can tell. So why not do this? It's a huge savings to your to your web page. Um, so I went and looked at the Lighthouse scores, and this is from about a year ago, and about half of the web gets this right, 48%. 32% uh, score less than 50%. Uh, I just reran this, and it's about the same this year. We've gotten a little better here. We're about the same here. So like, this is squeezing, right? This, you know, 31% still are, are horrible. Um, but what we're seeing is, you know, 50% of the web is doing image quality correctly. What I found is the, the median savings here would be 3.7 seconds faster and 130K less data. For these folks down here who scored a zero, um, on mobile, they'd be nine seconds faster and use 1.6 megabytes less data just by optimizing the quality on their web pages. Um, you have to imagine these sites have giant images that are just not optimized for delivery on a mobile device. So can we go even better than 85%? Like Google says 85% is where we go. That's what Lighthouse tests us for. At 50%, if you look really carefully, there's some kerning up in the sky here. Like for a lot of applications on the web, you're probably all right. And it's half the size of 85%. Um, I always try to go down to 20%. So you can see like this image looks really poor, right? You can see all sorts of lines in the sky. We wouldn't want to go this low. People would start saying that the image is not of high quality. Um, but is there a sweet spot in the middle here? And there are actually tools that will do this for us. There are tools that will find the threshold of like the what the human eye can identify. Um, Google built a tool called Buderaugli. There's also structural similarity. And it literally, there's, an, there's math that decides like the human eye can start to see that the image isn't good. So we go a little bit better quality than that. Um, there's some open source tools that will do that. Command line tools, Cloudinary can do it. There are a lot of tools out there that will do this structural similarity for you automatically. And when I do that, here's the image. If you remember the 85% image was 1.85 megabytes. So I saved another 400K. And like if the human eye can't tell a difference, like there's no reason not to do this. Um, and we saved another 400K, which means, of course, that this image is going to download faster, the web page is going to load faster, the performance is better, and all the research shows that when a web page is faster, people stay on the web page longer. Um, if it's an e-commerce site, they spend more money, which is, you know, if you're building an e-commerce site, that's probably important. Um, there's a lot of reasons to have faster web pages. Um, I ran these through with web page tests, right? So the full size image. Um, takes 21 seconds to download on a 3G connection. The 85% the 85 is 11, and the uh, structural similarity, the, the uh, image is nine seconds. So we've made the download time twice as, you know, we've halved the, the download time. The next one we want to talk about is image formats. So there are a lot of different image formats out there that we're probably familiar with, GIFs and JPEGs and PNGs. SVGs and WebP. Let's talk about SVGs to start with. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, SVGs are vector graphics and they're XML. You just draw shapes in your XML and they're text files and they can be added inline to your HTML. And so this is the Twitter logo. You can stretch it to any size and because it's all just vectors, it looks the same. Um, if you do see some like pixelization here, that's because PowerPoint doesn't support SVGs. And I had to take a screenshot, make it a PNG, and then you know whatever, import it into PowerPoint. Um, but I found this web page that has this sort of you know bullet label on it, and they're using this as a divider. It's this little tiny. It's it's you know as a divider between sections. And when I was looking in the Chrome Dev Tools, I'm like, oh, there's something wrong with this SVG. And um, so I opened it up. It's a text file. And so you can see here, here we're drawing the circle and we're drawing some paths. And then you see here we've got um, Adobe Illustrator CRUD. And so when you create an SVG with Illustrator, it actually base64 encodes the original image and plops it in there as metadata. And what that ended up doing is this tiny little SVG logo was 946K. And I actually just checked, this SVG is still on the web page. They're still downloading every time you go to this web page. They're downloading almost a megabyte for these simple circles. 
Um, the fix is, of course, to come here and click with your mouse, drag to the bottom and press delete. And when you remove that, that uh, metadata from the file, it becomes one kilobyte. Like this is the easiest optimization in the entire world. Um, it's a text file, so you can gzip it, or you can use Broadly and get it down to like half a kilobyte. So this web page for well over a year has been serving like almost a megabyte for this one file when it could be half a K. Um, to make things worse, they have an orange version as well. Um, they are both 946 kilobytes. For those of you who are um, CSS experts, you can actually take the red one and use CSS to color it orange with two lines of CSS. So you could have 500 bytes, download the image once, and then two lines of CSS, and you have two images. Um, however, this web page decided to go the 1.8 megabyte approach for these two tiny little images. And as you can imagine, that has profound performance effects on slower connections, like 1.8 megabytes of stuff that could be under 1K is sort of ridiculous. And we know we can do better than that, so we should do better than that. Um, the other thing we I see a lot of in terms of images is uh, PNG is, a, is an awesome format. It's lossless, so um, you can't compress it, you can't lower the quality on PNGs. Um, by default, when you use a Mac and you take a screenshot, you may recognize this, it, this image, uh, if you use a Mac, screenshot, year, month, day, at time. And um, this web page actually, literally, they got the image all perfect on their screen, maybe in Photoshop, and then they just went Ch -ch -ch and took a picture of it and then posted that online. And you know, the Apple screenshot tool is designed to take screenshots. You know, this is a screenshot of a tweet I took, right? That's fine. Um, but it's not designed for optimal web performance. So I took 3,000 of those images that I found that had the word screenshot in the, in the name. I found them in the HTTP archive. And I found that 35% of them could be 10% of the original size, right? Easy fix to make your images 10, you know, 10% 10 of the original size. That's kind of a no-brainer. And all I did was turn it into a JPEG and do some quality optimizations like I did in the first section. The other thing we can do, and this is in Lighthouse, is we can go to newer image formats. And so Chrome, Firefox, and Edge support WebP. Um, Safari supports JPEG 2000. These are newer image formats. I believe JPEG's like 27 years old. Um, WebP is about eight or nine years old. Uh, JPEG 2000, I, I don't know when it came out. I think it's only about eight or nine years old as well. Um, you can see that WebP is supported in a lot of the major, major modern browsers. It's not in Safari. There have been rumors for you know, years that it's coming. We've got our fingers crossed that it will come to Safari at some point. Um, but if I do structural similarity and then I do WebP, I save another 400K on this image. Right, so it's now at that optimal quality. I've changed the format and it's now under a megabyte. We can now see that it now takes seven seconds to load. And if you're building different formats, you can use the picture tag in your HTML. And what the picture tag does is the browser picks the first, um, picks the first format it knows what to do with. So if you're in Safari and it sees a WebP, it just falls down to the JPEG. Um, if you're in one of the browsers that supports WebP, you get the WebP image, and that's awesome. Um, so image format on the web, we find that 18% a year ago were using uh, the alternative formats. 62% were failing. Um, this has improved a little bit. We're at 3% higher here. So as of last month, 21% of the web is getting a score of one, which is the highest score you can in Lighthouse for using alternate image formats. Um, for those who were failing, they could be six seconds faster on a 3G connection. For the ones that scored zero, we're talking the median page. So 13% of the web would save at least uh, 2.4 megabytes of data and be 15 seconds faster. Can you imagine waiting 30, 40 seconds for a web page to load? These are these pages down here. And simply by optimizing those image formats, um, they could speed up the web page. Uh, sizing. Uh, we heard about sizing images in the last talk a little bit. We want to make sure that the images are sized appropriately for the different size devices. Um, the example here is I have this picture of a cathedral in Serbia. It's, you know, 
what is that? Uh, lots of, you know, 13 megapixels, something like that. And it was 1.6 megabytes. I optimized it, it's 800K with all the stuff I've done so far, but it's still 13 million pixels. And if you show it on a small screen, um, you end up throwing away 12 and a half million pixels. The phone has to download all 13 million pixels, but only 500,000 show up on the screen. So if you're on a low powered device, like the CPU has to fire up and throw away like 95% of what's showing up on the screen. Um, it's sort of like when you buy something from Amazon and you get this giant box full of brown paper and you open it up and you open up all the paper and there's like a pencil in the bottom of the box. That's what we're doing um, when we have these really huge images and we're trying to serve them up on small screens. And so the fix, and, and there's actually a, a second tax to this in that on a 3G connection, it doesn't matter what device this downloads on, it takes about 14 seconds to download. On a fast CPU, it takes under 100 milliseconds to resize it. To take 16 million pixels down to 1 million pixels, it took 78 milliseconds. On a Motorola G4, which is like a mid-range device, it took 200 milliseconds. On the Alcatel 1X, which is this really, really low end, like 50 euros at the store Android device, it took another 800 milliseconds for the phone to decode the image. And so that extra processing is making your web page slower to people on these devices. Um, there are a lot of different devices out there, a lot of different device sizes. This is all Android devices <clears throat> that hit Akamai in one day. And you can see all the different size screens, or the different size is the um, um, number of devices in the market. Green means it's a fast CPU, red means it's a slow CPU. There are a lot of very low market share, very slow devices out there. So how do you have the right size image for all these devices? The answer is responsive images, where you generate a bunch of different image sizes. Um, in this case, I generated a bunch that were all 25 kilobytes different. And when the browser finds the right size image, in this case, now I'm only throwing away 100,000 pixels instead of 12 and a half million pixels. Um, there are a lot of tools that can do this. You can look in your analytics to see what screens are hitting your website, and you can find maybe Maybe like, in this case, I did 20 different images and that's probably insane. That's probably way too many. Um, but maybe you can find like small, medium, large, extra large, you know, four different size images that sort of fits all of the different devices in a nice way so that you um, can serve an appropriately sized image to all of the different devices that are out there. I mean, it doesn't make sense to serve um, 13 million pixels to a device with a very small screen. Um, and, and to be honest, I see this happen all the time, even on really popular websites, even in popular mobile apps. Um, I was just profiling a mobile app where there was like a, I don't know, let's say like a 14 megapixel image that was showing up as a thumbnail, right? Literally a thumbnail. Um, so once we resize the image to be responsive, it's the right number of pixels. And so you can see the image, and so this is, uh, it's a WebP, it's responsive, it's done the structural similarity. We're down to now two seconds on a 3G connection, 120K. And 120K image, that's reasonable. Like we're downloading the right size image for a mobile device, whereas a megabyte is still a little bit large. We should try to be as small as possible to keep our web pages fast. Um, if we look last year, 58% of the web was passing this, uh, 20, uh, a quarter was failing. Um, we've improved a bit on this one. Um, we are still doing, uh, only 20% is failing and 66% are passing. So it's almost like the people from this bucket went up to that bucket, which is great. So we're seeing still steady adoption of responsive images on the web. Um, again, if you're not being responsive, your web page will be faster on a mobile device. Um, if you're really bad and scoring a zero, you could be 15 seconds faster. And that's pretty remarkable just by changing the image sizes. Um, the last one is lazy loading, which Martin um, this, uh, was correct that I was going to talk about lazy loading. And so the idea behind lazy loading is, of course, um, that uh, if you have a full web page with lots of images that are below the fold, if you want the web page to load faster, only load the ones that are going to show up on the screen. And you just kicked four images out of the load time of your website. Um, there are a lot of JavaScript libraries that will do this for you. It will decide, you know, 
with the intersection observer what uh, images are near showing up on the screen and load them. Um, this is also built into uh, light mode in Chrome Mobile. So on Android devices, this is you can turn this on and it will, and it will run for you. Um, this is two years ago. Uh, it was very low adoption. But last year we went up to 56% adoption and we're at 59% adoption for lazy loading today. So 60% of the web is doing this, which is awesome. For the sites that are not lazy loading, we're looking at three seconds of savings. And then of course, these folks who are getting zeros, um, I have this sort of gut feeling that the sites that are scoring zero on this one are scoring zero on all the other ones as well. Um, they could save like two megabytes and 12 seconds of load time. And so the idea behind lazy loading is, um, you know, just don't load the images that are going to show up on this, you know, just load the images that are um, showing up on the screen. And when people scroll, then the JavaScript will make the request to download those images properly. So, you know, these are the four optimizations that are built into, um, the, uh, into Lighthouse. And so if you run a Lighthouse test on your web page, you'll find out how you're doing with these. And you can then go through and um, follow the approaches that I've talked about here to optimize your images and then add lazy loading as a JavaScript library and you can make your web page run a lot faster. And by making your web page run faster, it becomes accessible to more people around the world who are on slower network connections. Um, and then of course, people tend to come back to web pages that are fast more often. So that's a great thing. So in conclusion, you know, we can optimize our images for quality, format, sizing. We can lazy load them. Um, I talked about animated GIFs, I believe, in December. Um, I can talk about that really briefly here uh, for those of you who didn't get to hear that talk. Um, and we can also monitor some headers. So let me just show that really quickly. Um, this is preview images. So this is a part of lazy loading. You can, you know, use... Um, low quality image placeholders. These are just SVGs and then load in those. And um, so that's lazy loading, sorry. So animated GIFs. This is my goat Nora back in Seattle. I took a movie of her, 1.4 megabytes. I turned it into a GIF, 3.8 megabytes. GIFs are extremely bloated. If you're gonna put GIFs on your web page, really the best practice um, is not to use a GIF and if you go all the way back to 1990 and you read the spec, this is literally in the spec for GIF. It says don't use animated GIFs, even though you can. Um, you know, I know I'm not listening to the inventor of GIF on the pronunciation, but maybe we should listen to them on the usage. Um, and the reason for that is GIFs are literally, if you have 20 frames per second, it's literally 20 GIFs. There's no compression over time. Um, so you should make it a movie and then serve it as a video file. Um, if you ever look on Twitter, you'll see that this says it's a GIF, right? Um, but if you look in DevTools, it's a movie. So never actually use GIFs in, on your web pages. Use a movie and then you can use the video tag and you set it to loop, autoplay, and muted and it'll just loop the movie and it looks like a GIF. And so that's the way to do that. Um, so, you know, I'm really happy to be back at um, WebZurich and I appreciate you all having me again. Um, we can optimize our images a lot of different ways to make web pages faster. Um, here are all the tools that I used. I used web page test and HTTP archive for the analysis of what the web is doing today. I used image magic, structural similarity. I used lazy sizes as my library for lazy loading. 